Okay. Hello, everyone. We are back with Ginny Drake, Virginia Drake. She has a very powerful name, so I like to say it. And today, I think the conversation that we are going to have is fascinating. Ginny has great experiences. Her stories are riveting. And I hope you feel the same way that I do when I speak to Ginny. So, Ginny, I'm, I love the topic that we just discussed. Let's do it. Okay. Well, in 1998, when I had my first near-death experience that I remembered, I was opening things up that I'd never experienced. So I wanted to do more metaphysical things. Like I, So I joined a metaphysical uh, class in college. And it was, you know, it was like one of those enrichment college, you know, um, I guess college, whatever it was. It was in a college. And I remember going in. And I really got intrigued by what I was seeing and what, but I was also by coming into that vibration. And this is my very beginnings. I mean, I'm really looking, I am seeking just like any seeker that thinking, oh, they're really, am I crazy? Am I really feeling all of this? And these people, a lot of psychics were in this lots. So I sat there and I, I would go to dinner with them and we'd have a seven o'clock more, you know, meeting and have a class. Then we would go to a restaurant and then we'd all sit down. And I did not say a lot because I did not have any understanding, a lot of it at the beginning. But then they started talking about being wolves. And I kept thinking, now I would stay with these people like two or three in the morning. My ex-husband, my husband at the time thought I'd lost my mind. Every Tuesday I'd be out, you know, cruising with these people. And I tried to tell him that they were not everyday normal people. I watched them. I watched them turn into wolves. I watched them. I ran with them, not as a wolf, but as an observer. And I mean, we would sit in there and we, I would sit there and watch them shape shift right in front of me. And they would think, oh my God, I am losing it. So I finally did say enough. I said, what's going on here? They said, you can see us. And I said, yeah. My apologies. I, I got kicked off. Okay. Do you mind if I create us another link, send it to you, because I don't know where we're at. Well, actually, I guess we'll keep going, but I missed all of that. You started cutting out, and then when I came wow. back in, yeah, I know. I was surprised to find you were still going, because mine stopped at 23 seconds in. Isn't that funny? Because that is something maybe we don't, they don't, the higher consciousness doesn't want us to talk about because it is intense. Uh, I'm, I'm really telling you the truth about that because like I said, I was with these people for almost seven or eight months. All I was, was a witness. I never, I mean, they would talk about things that I've never heard about how they, you know, they could shape shift and we'd sit for hours and hours after the class. But then I started having profound experiences. Like I got a phone call one day from a girl. I went to college at Eastern Kentucky University. And this girl found me and she was in Eastern or at the college, called me and said, there is a man in the library. I mean, no, in the bookstore, Wallace bookstore. And I know he's a vampire. And I thought, whoa, you know, how did, she, first of all, how did she even find me? I wasn't out there talking to anybody. I was observing people. I was so it kind of threw me off because this is how it kind of when you open up yourself to the universe, it opens up everything. I mean, you don't know the good, the bad, what you got, because if you've never had this experience, I mean, I've had glimpses, I've had deja vu, and my favorite my parents used to get real freaked up because I'd say. I, we're going to see this. This is going to happen. And my father would look at my mother and say, that really freaks me out that she would. And then it would happen. And it would freak them out every time because I was an only child. So, you know, I would say something and they both look at each other. And finally, my mother was the one when I was probably after my dad died at 16. She said, don't tell anybody that you've seen your father. She said, they'll take you out in a, a straight jacket. My father was taken out in a straight jacket. So I had a very good clarity of what that feels like. 
And, you know, then I have to look at everything I'm going through now in the 1980s, you know, 1998. And I am looking crazier than ever. And I couldn't tell anybody. I did not be able to tell anybody this was going on. Now, my husband at the time thought I was having an affair because I was staying up like two and three, sometimes four o'clock. It was like I was coming out and then I was coming out with something different. And uh, I had a journal and he would write, you know, he would read my journal and it freak him out. And that's why they thought I had to have, he thought I needed to have to be go to, you know, an asylum or I need to be committed. Okay. Because I missed a, everything of what you had said prior because mm -hmm. of the glitch. I want to, if you don't mind, can we go back to your experience in 1998? You said you went to, this is what I, you went to a college, right? And yeah, I was going to a class, a rich enrichment right, college. Right, because you were trying to open your, you had an experience and you're like, I'm yeah. guessing there's more to yeah. life than what I think. Like, I don't know what, yeah. but there's more than I, I know I don't know everything. Mm -hmm. So you started opening your horizons, having new experiences, and that's one of them that you chose to do. Yeah. Now, I don't know if the people in the class are the ones that, when I came in, are the now, shape that was or the were they the teachers? Well, it was all of them, the teacher, and there was three of these psychic people. Well, they, this is when I learned a lot. They also knew I was innocent. They knew I was looking and they were really giving me some experiences that I don't think they would have given that to everybody because they shape shifted in front of me as a wolf. I was telling this on a radio show and the guy stopped. He said, I can't talk about this anymore. He, he stopped the radio show and everything because he said, I don't want you talking about this. And I thought, why? And they, and he's a ghost hunter. So what it was, it was shocking to think that that really was real, even though you're going to ghost hunting and you're seeing ghosts, but you had never seen a true shapeshifter. I saw shapeshifters in a lot of people. I mean, I'm a shapeshifter. But I didn't know that until I started working with clients and they would look at me and they'd say, your face is changing. And you're changing like 15 or 16 times. Like, Ch -ch 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 -ch. So I started doing a lot of mirror work to see it myself. Well, that all that is, is your soul is showing you all of the faces. This is my feelings that our, our souls have gone through these different personality faces and it's there. I mean, you'll feel it. And then that's how I started learning. When you said, do you meditate to get this information? No, I sit in a mirror a lot of times and it would give me information or beings would show up and tell me like I had an Egyptian woman that came in and said, you know, you're an Egyptian. And I, well, I remember when I went to Illinois, I went into a Jewish uh, temple and I walked into the temple and it said, welcome home, dear one. And I thought, I'm Jewish. So, you know, you're getting all kinds of experiences, but you've got to be aware. You can't discourage, you know, you just can't say that's not true. I had to go in deeper and lay in it. And all of a sudden it, the whole experience would show up in a different way. And I would think, God, I was. So, yes. Well, it's interesting because the mirror work, I've done that with you. And I've when I was coming up, you know, like we're talking about, that was one of the exercises that we did in um, our development class. Mm -hmm. So not only can you see that in your mirror, but we used to have an exercise where you take two people and you stick, you know, just stare into each other's mm -hmm. eyes and you'll have the same experience. And that's what I believed is that you're seeing everything that you have been, they have been. But it's yes. that I, I didn't take that as a shape shifter, like turning into a wolf. Like, well, now, but you do see their faces change. Now, these wolves, where they were, they were wolves. I mean, I, was, I sat and watched them. And then I saw the, a lot of things. They we were at a restaurant. You know, one of the restaurants, like you said, all night long. It's one of those long time ago. You don't get to do that anymore. 
And I would sit, and I mean, I was just mesmerized of all of this that was going on. I was like, oh my God. And I mean, they knew that I was an innocent in this. They knew, so they would really create uh, energy for me to watch, to see how I was going. And then this is the best, because I think they took my innocence in many ways because they uh they were psychics one of them was jim white now and, and i can call him out because it ended up 50, i mean five or six years later i was who i was and i met him at a psychic fair and he looked at me and he said oh my god you're bigger than and i said anybody you've ever met and i said you're not going to get away with that again with anybody else because they scared me and they scared me in a way <clears throat> for me to really retaliate in a way when people, this is what makes me mad. When I've got an innocent, especially young ones that have had an experience and then somebody's going to train them differently from the higher consciousness of God. And that's the way I feel. They take them out. And that's how we have these problems with these children because they've been programmed to see things that, you know, they're not ready to see. I mean, I was at that time, 47, 47 years old. So I still was shocked because we see it on movies. I mean, when they did the werewolf kind of thing, there was these four, I mean, well, there was three of them. They were, they were wolves. I could touch them. And the same thing happened to me. I had a girl in my house who turned into a black leopard right in front of me and I could touch her hair. And if I had been not aware that I was seeing this, I think she could have hurt me. And I'm being honest. She, oh, so was, she knew that she did it. It's what you said. Yeah, she, she, knew. Oh, yeah. she even looked at me and she said, do you see who I really am? And I said, yes, I do. But I said, that's incorrect what you're doing to me. You're making me feel fear. And I'm not in fear anymore because I went into her and she backed out and came back in. They used so, fear. Okay. So you're saying the wolves did not have good intentions with you. No, they did not. No. Uh, in fact, Jim White, this is what scared me. This is when my I was in the very beginning. So I watched him. And one night I was in my house. Now, this man had no idea where I lived. I lived in Versailles compared to Lexington that I was going. He had no idea. I looked up in a meditation. He's standing in my bedroom. And I was horrified because I know there's one thing that the teacher did teach that you do never intervene in somebody else's life or in their space unless you give them information that you're coming in. This guy scared me, but what he did is he went to my son's room and he scared him. And that's when, you know, you can say a lot of things to me, but you're not going to mess with my children. And I went to Katie, that was the teacher, and I told her what I saw, what he did. And she came down on him and said, that's unacceptable. You never do that. And you know that. And what you've done is you violated her family and her home. And I mean, she laid him out. That's when I knew you can't mess with this kind of stuff when you're hurt and you know, you're scaring people. That's why. But I'm going to tell you, I don't regret because I saw a man. I saw this. He didn't shape shift, but he had a different take. I was in that uh, ceremony on ayahuasca. I was doing ayahuasca. Now they brought him in and he was taking people's aura, women especially. He was going up going, <sighs> and I would sit and watch him take the aura and take their spirit. I sat and watched it and I jumped up and I said, well, I didn't jump up. No, my higher self said, you're going to go to him and you're going to put your hands out and you're going to say, here, take it, take it. And I thought, now that kind of frightened me to have somebody. He said, let me tell you, my spirit said he will never take it because he wants to steal it from you, not be given to it from you. That's a whole new experience. They want to steal it. 
They like they love that they don't know that you don't know what they're doing. And I sat and watched it. And so I chased his ass all around the damn room. And he kept saying, oh, no, no, <laughs> because they can't take it like that. They want to steal it. So okay. you got to watch it with people around you a lot of times. OK, so from what I'm getting with this shape, are you saying then shapeshifters in general? No, not oh. because I have I have shapeshifters that are called shimmers. Shimmers are like a golden light. And I saw them in the airports all the time. They go by like that. You know, you'd see them and nobody else is seeing them but us, me. And I kept thinking, am I losing my mind? But they would wave at me. I mean, I'd be sitting with a group of people and they'd be waving at me. And I'm thinking, what in the, I've been in an airport, you know, airplane and I see them. I mean, they were light, golden light beings. Now, then you have other light beings. The, well, they're, they're from here, but they're shape-shifting into other opportunities for themselves, not to bring light in it. And you got to watch. I mean, I've been with people that have freaked out in an airplane that I've had to stand up and tell everybody to be quiet because this person is going off and we're getting ready to fly in and you can feel the fear in a plane. That's when I was trained that anytime I go in to be with somebody or a group of some, you raise your frequency above them and you will have a, a like babies will stop crying in an airplane you because you're setting this, you know, the vibration above everybody else's. I mean, people start looking at you. I've done this in Walmart with my students, put them in there and they all say, what are we going to do? I said, you're going to raise the frequency and you'll see people smiling people because if you look what's going on right now, they're a lower frequency. They need to bring that frequency back up to the earth because the earth is being pulled down as well. So she feels your spirit. She raises up with you. I've seen it in Walmart. I've seen people kneel down and we're praying for them. I did it in West Virginia. I mean, in Virginia. I mean, it's been amazing work, but you've got to remember who you really are honoring here. Your higher consciousness, not coming down in the lower consciousness. And that's when I started seeing. But like I said, that's why I could disappear. That's why you saw the plasma. Because I've learned, and I always put it right here in my forehead, but it's like inside of me. It's like I have a dial that I used in when I was a kid on my radio dial, and you could feel it. I mean, I was so good because if we had snow, I'd turn that radio on because I wanted to know if I was going to go, you know, to school or not. But you could feel the knob, even the notches. So I created that in my mind because it was a feeling. And when I'd go one, you'd feel a little bit. Then I went to three and it will. And then I went to 10. It was like, Ooh! and I thought this is how it works. So I started learning to use the dial, you know, the knob, but then I really didn't need a knob anymore. I already knew it was there. Cause you practice this, you're raising your frequency up and everybody said, how do you do it? I said, it's not that hard. It's a consciousness. When you understand how that works, then you come out into a higher consciousness, which when I've walked into, you know, to crowds or if I've been getting ready to speak, I can feel I raise them up to me. And then I can see and I say, I see that you want to do. Uh, I see you want to you have a question you want to ask me. And they'll go, no, I don't. I said, yes, you do. And then they go, well, yeah, I do. <laughs> you know, I really did. I thought, why didn't you just say it? Because people are afraid to speak out what they're having an understanding about. And they're too afraid to ask because, well, I just had some young kids in here and they were 19 and 20 year olds. And they're terrified of what I did when I showed them what I was showing them because they had no experience of it. But they came here to say, we want to learn about you know, spirituality. And I said, all spirituality is, is breath. Breath of God. That's all spirituality is. The more breath you bring in, the more vibration you get, you gain. It is. It's so simple, but it's so difficult for people because they've got to get out of their mind. That doesn't make sense to them. And that's it, why. Uh, yeah. 
I think this is a similar thing because I, I try to teach people, especially if it, when they started with spirituality, the dial, you picked up a radio dial. Uh -huh. What I see is a dimmer switch. Oh, yeah. To light up and down. And I tell them, just raise it up. If you want to shift the energy. Yeah, or a switch. Some people have switches. I had to find out sometimes where their switch is or what it is. And I'll make them go into a room of their mind and they'll find it. But usually it's, it's really dark. It's the same. Yeah, it's a very similar yeah. concept. Well, now, you if you go into a different part of their mind, you're shifting them to a different state of mind. And you have to because they're never going to be at this point. I wonder if the story that you mentioned, I remember you telling me um, a, a very interesting story. And I think it was connected to that, but I could be wrong. Where it wasn't just one person that you saw doing something like that, but there was like a group of people, and I don't don't know if you'd call this shape shifting, but they were not human, and they were throughout the room, and they were saying, "She sees us. She sees us." Well, those yes. they were shape shifters. Yes, with and, ill uh, intent. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. When the shaman said, "She sees." she sees us i mean i was see, they were there was one that was a goat yeah they were coming up and going smelling my aura and see i for, you know if i hadn't had all of those experience prior i would have freaked out with this but i knew exactly so i'm never afraid when i see them do this shit. i mean uh, maybe i should say that but then, yeah i don't care you're talking to danielle yeah, please it's a lot of shit because i went like this and i just went right into them and i said i can see you and she didn't realize that i could really see her and i said you are a goat and i could see her hoofs i could see her horns I could, and then she went and then she jumped up out of the chair that she was sitting on, or really she wasn't sitting on, she was standing in this chair, leaning down, looking at me. And she yelled to the shaman. She said, she knows. Oh my God, Armand, she knows. And I went after him because I knew what he was doing was incorrect. Hey, I saw people turn into mice there. I saw people turn it. I mean, I, but I have been with a witch that, uh, yeah, I saw a lot of things. I mean, to get bit by a wasp to wake me up because they put me in a trance. I went into this house and uh, it had all of the rocks. This is the very beginnings. My my husband was with me. He thought I was losing my mind. He's, I said, no, I want to go. It's called Angel Wings. And a friend had said, you got to go. And it was Shelbyville. It's probably about 45 minutes away from me. And I couldn't wait because I thought maybe somebody will tell me something. When I walked in, it's all of these geodes and all of these, you know, uh, stones. And, and when I walked in, they go, Ee! and I could feel everything is vibrational because I walked in because I'm a higher vibration. So I asked this man, he said, he came out of this curtain, <laughs> like this other room. He said, we've been waiting for you. And I thought, this is why people, when they first wake up, Daniela, the, everything comes in very fast because I had a near death experience. So everything was coming in. This is why it makes me mad when these innocents have an experience and there's nobody like me or you that can help them because they attack. And I was so smart that I believed in God so strongly when they looked at me and this woman was there, she was in my high school. She was a senior when I was a freshman. She'd been watching me. She lived right down the road from me on the farm. And she said, we've been watching you and we knew you were going to come. And she, and she said, I'm a witch. And then her son has these balls going up like that. He just stopped them up in the middle of the air. And he said, and I'm a warlock. Then there was a guy that had a black patch in his eye and he said, I'm a Christian. And then these two people like a husband and wife are, they were, there's something connected and they were mice. And I'm sitting there thinking, this is my, that was my, one of my second experiences with these people, you know, something like that. And I remember I went into a trance. I said, I'm going to come back. And I, and I was inside of my body, but I was having a voice talking outside of me 
that I didn't recognize. So that is, they literally overcame my soul and they were using that. Oh yeah. They, it was, it was scary. That part was very scary because, but I'm walking out and I'm telling them I'm going to come back and I'm going to help teach there and everything. And, and I'm, and I'm saying in the back of me going, what in the world, who is that talking? This one, I knew that this is how this happens. I'm thinking, who's talking? Who is that talking? But I used to do that when I was a teacher because I'd be teaching a lesson and I'd be talking about Roman soldiers or whatever. And then there'd be a, no, a Roman soldier talking and I'm in the, uh, the back of my body going, who is that? Who even knows that? So I was having profound experiences, but I wasn't aware that I, I thought I was just making them up because I'd done all this research for my students. So no, I was really experiencing this. And so when I left that woman and that witch in here, I mean, cause I was like, I remember I walked out and a wasp bit me and took me out, uh, you know, but I didn't know I'd been bit. So I'm getting in the car and my husband at that time was there and he saw the wasp and he said, Jenny, you've got a wasp on you. And it bit me, but it didn't sting me. And as he hit it to get it off of me, the uh, wasp turned around and said, don't forget that I say I, I helped you. I saved your life. Wow. And it died. And I went, my God. So everything is helping each other, even down to the insects. Okay, give me a second. So you were drawn to go to the shop. Yes, because of and it was called Angel Wings. Angel Wings. So I'm going in there because the wings, Angel Wings. And it right. had angel wings on the door. Right, but it's a farce. But it's a farce because it was pulling people in. Right, under, yeah. Yeah. So you have that. Then you hurt yourself committing to things that, that there you. Was no way. Yeah, it wasn't me. That would, you would have no interest in teaching in a place like that. Like that. No. Connecting with these people. It's no. not your thing. Uh -uh. And yet I'm you, horrified. and it sounded like you probably sounded like your voice, but it's almost like, do you know what it sounds like to me? A Jedi mind trick. You will leave this establishment. Mm -hmm. You will order a Coke. It sounds like you're describing. Well, it was a programming that they were they were mesmerizing me. And I see this with kids a lot being mesmerized by television, by, you know, movies, because their frequency is there. Because I can't even go to a theater anymore. I went to see um, Lucy. If anybody out there wants to see what particles feel like, Lucy, the movie Lucy, she goes into particles. I'm sitting at the theater with four other people and she goes into particles. The next thing I know, my whole body just went into particles and I'm in the back of the theater sitting with a man eating his popcorn and I can smell it. And, I, and I'm thinking, I could see the back of my head thinking, how do I get back in there? Now I'm just sitting like this. Nobody's noticed anything. And, and I remember when I was uh, scared with my ex, when I would get scared or I'd have a terror and I'd have to try to find my ex-husband. I'd have to go and find him. If all I had to do is just touch his skin, it would bring me back into my body. Now, I didn't know that's what was going on. I was just terrified by the dream or the nightmare. So I knew how to do that. So when I finally got my, there was a, one of my friends was next to me and I pushed and pushed to get my energy in that finger. And when I tapped her, I went, <gasps> and I came back in my body, but it took me two hours to stay in. I mean, I was disoriented. I mean, it is, it's a very, when you first start doing this, you're very disoriented because your body has been here, but your soul and your spirit is back here. So you're trying to incorporate to get back in. It's a different ride. So that is an out of body experience. That absolutely. Okay, yes, that one is. took you by surprise. Uh, well, I've been doing it, but I've been calling it, you know, a night terror, and it would put it would it would paralyze me. This is where your paralyzed dreams are. I was dreamed in paralyzed. I was paralyzed, 
And I mean, I had, a, and I would have to really work to get my finger over to my ex, my husband at the time. And as soon as I could tap him or if I could touch him with my foot, I would bring me back. Okay. Cause so I, I feel had, like I, at night it's a very natural thing. I don't know if everybody does this, but I find it, I've been doing it my whole life, right? Leaving your yeah, body. You become paralyzed. It's a nightmare and it's a paralyzation of your entire body. I mean, I can see everything. Feel. I mean, I used to have visitation all the time that would come in and I'd be paralyzed like angels leaning down and said, you're going to be okay. You know, it freaked me out. And I wouldn't tell anybody because I thought I was absolutely crazy. I, I have all kinds of been, you know, visitation all the time. I would like to ask you just what you think. I think I know what it is, but I'm not 100% sure. Okay. Because this is just a norm of traveling in my sleep. And oh, it's yeah. not, for me, it's not always nightmares at all. Sometimes it's very pleasant. Mm -hmm. So, but I remember one time being very angry at how I thought I was being woken up. To me, it felt like somebody had their hands on my body, both of them, shaking me. Yes. Shaking me, like, roughly, where it mm -hmm. hurt. Mm -hmm. And I turned around and said, how dare you wake me up? Somebody was standing, truly, on mm -hmm. my bedside with a cup of coffee. And I said, how dare you wake me up in such a harsh fashion? Why would you shake me? I was really pissed. Uh -huh. And a person was in shock. Mm -hmm. And they said, all I did was gently touch you. Yes, but, that, but that's not to, Because I wasn't in body, right. I came back fast because you're interrupting my travels. Right. Like, but it's not very pleasant when something interferes. Well, I have never, I, now I've seen a lot, you know, when I've traveled, Sometimes I go to other countries. Sometimes I walk on land and that's how I know. And then the next week or two weeks or three weeks, I find myself walking on that same land. And it's a preview of coming attractions that I'm going to be going in. Now, I'm really good about going in through the computer. I can go right into the particles of the computer and be like the Skinwalker Ranch. I wanted to do some Skinwalker. I just was watching some videos. Next thing I was, I was there. And I knew I was walking on the land and I kept looking back and thinking, okay, I'm in the computer. And, but I'm seeing myself outside of that computer sitting in my chair. And then I just said, well, then let's just go on and do it. So I started, that's how I knew it's skin ranch. That is a tunnel underneath that ranch. That is a whole set of stuff going on. That is a tunnel. That is something going on with the military. And you knew it was the military. I mean, they don't like people like us in there. Because same thing, I took a group to D.C. I took them with me. And there was somebody re that met us at the door. And I've never, I've been to D.C. many, many times watching stuff. And I remember this guy stopped and said, not this time, girlfriend. And he said it just like that. He said, you can't get in because we're all being uh, held back. And I thought, I pulled them all back in and set them down. I, and they all said, what happened? I said, they have closed up where I couldn't go. I mean, I used to try because I took kids there for seven years. So I knew everything about the White House, D.C. But, uh, you know, you just, you learn there's so much going on that, you know, and I used to do it all the time, but as a child, I used to do it. I could go to my grandmother's and be at my mother's house at the same time. But I didn't know that that was called journaling or, you know, you're, uh, you're out of body. I did not know any of that. I didn't have anything. I just did it all the time. It's also called bilocation. Yes. Whatever See. you want to call it, it's an experience of no longer in the same state of mind you were before. I've had that people have reported to me for years, but I'm not aware of it. Well, I've had clients that I was, a, I was working with a client in another country and she was very, very ill. And the next couple of days she called me back and said, you were at my bedside holding my hand. And I said, really? And she said, Jenny, 
you even patted my hand and said, we're going to be fine. And she said, I woke up a couple of days later and I was fine. And I've had, I've had to work with a, you know, a client that in Italy and he was, he was dying. His girlfriend called me and I, she said, you're in the hospital room with us. And I'm on the phone with her. And I said, what? She said, Jenny, you're standing here in the hospital room while I'm talking to you. I said, there's no. And I thought, OK, if that's the case, I said, is there a window? Am I standing at a window? And she said, yes, you're looking outside of Italy. And I went, oh, and I've never been to Italy. And I started naming the physicals that would be what I'm seeing. And she said, that's right. That's when I knew. That's cool. Like, it's just weird that it had to be brought to your attention. Like, I had no idea. Like, I had no recollection. Like, at least you were able to connect to it. But I've had people that can hear me. They see me. And it's just very odd. But Well, because you still have had that, uh, that block. There's a block that that can't be possible because you can't be over here and over there at the same time. That's where you have believed what the world of man has told you. Because I don't you can, think so, because I know that when I choose to do it, it's a, you know, you know, that's a different story when I choose to, but to be told, I just saw you like one time I um, called my daughter. You like, you're calling your so in then for them. And you're not and you're not aware of it. That's what they do. They call. I get phone call. I mean, I get people that call me in. Possibly. possibly. Yeah, because they trust you so much that they I mean, you think about it. People hear my voice a lot in their mind. I mean, I have somebody say, oh, yes, you're in my mind. You're yes. in my, and I said, but I don't want to be in your mind. I want your your voice to be in your mind because they think that we're so much stronger than they are, Daniela, that they oh. can't imagine themselves being like that. Okay. So they give us power of our voice. We I'm teaching people to use their own power because of I don't course. want to be in their power. You know, of that's course. not our job is to empower them. We are, It's to empower them, but not to give us power. No. Well, but there's a lot yeah. of people like us that enjoy that kind of power. I um, Then I would disagree when you say there's a lot of people like us. I, I would change it to there's people that do maybe similar things, but... If you want power over somebody else, to me, that is not of the light. No, and I agree with you. But when you understand the two processes, then you already know where they are. You don't have to even think about what it is. Anybody that's going to override anybody's so or their and take their power, you already know they're out. That's <laughs> the ego trip. That, you know, and well, you already know it because when somebody's trying to steal other people's souls and they're doing it. Like when I saw that shaman and he came from L.A. Oh, honey, I knew I told even Jeremy, I said, if I ever got, they wanted me to go to L.A. to meet all the actors because they thought I was about money. Power. And that's when they found out, oh, this girl doesn't believe in that because I knew I've already been over. So I don't want power. I don't want money. I want the grace of God. And I want to help people, but I don't want to override them. And this is where they got into it with me because I won't let anybody, especially innocents, I don't care how old they are. If there's an innocent and they're going to screw with them, then they're going to have to go through me first. That makes me angry as well. Doesn't it? Um, oh, furious, furious. It does because that's not what we are about. Oh, I got chills when you said that. Wanted to ask, I wasn't planning on doing this, just want to see your opinion. Because I have a theory about when I was like a kid, you know, you had a lot of experiences. Your experiences sound different than mine. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I was just a wuss, you know, coward. <laughs> but um, I had a lot of things happen. I grew up in a freaky house. 
with even though you're an only child, I'm the youngest of seven. You know, your <laughs> your house was a lot emptier than mine, but yet I felt very alone. And I feel like I was taunted and I had mm -hmm. a lot of experiences. And some people say the reason that it may have been so harsh or in my face was to help me to remember. I never fully lost my experiences. It's, you know what I mean? It's still yes. back there. I felt that they were trying to, and I could be wrong, put me in terror so I would not develop. And it worked. Oh, no, the, I I agree with you. Oh, I agree with you because they don't want us to wake up. They don't want us to know the truth because if we know the truth, then we have empowerment to change it. And they don't. That's why I said if we all would learn this and stop fighting with each other and really raise the frequency, we can change this within seconds. But people are still fighting against themselves, their souls and everybody. That's what they know. That I'm telling you, uh, they when I walk into a room, when I know that there's darkness in that room, I'm going to make sure I've got the lightest bright and I go right after them. And you've seen me do it. I'm not afraid. And they are knowing that I'm not afraid because when I look at them, say, I'm not afraid of you. And there's no power then. They have none because I got to watch what they did in that uh, side. You know, when I had all of that group, I had 10 people there. And I was livid what they did to them. I took them out. I picked every one of them up and said, you're going with me. And then I looked at him and I said, you ever come back here again? I will make sure you will live a very miserable life. And he knew what I meant. And he's in Miami right now doing it. And I told a lot of my clients in Miami, I said, do not go to Armand. Because he's, first of all, that's not ayahuasca and they're putting spells on it. These are people that, I mean, these are people that I'm glad I met the wolves first. I'm glad I got to see how it really worked because I would never been able to do what I did with him because see, I wasn't afraid. And if you're not afraid, they have no power. It's funny because I've had a really big shift with that since I've been here. I'm not sure why, but I definitely, I feel more solidified. Yes. Well, you um, had to back on that land because the land is a spirit. So there's something that you're walking in there that you're pulling up some reserve that you didn't even know. So it was there. It's always been there because, you know, you and I, I mean, that's what Jeremy and I, we can go somewhere or you and I can go, but we'll feel just like when you were standing on the balcony at Jeremy's and you felt the trees for the front, you know, really feeling them because I can, my plants, everything, if anybody's sensitive, my plants are already coming right up on top of them. And you can, I said, can you feel the plants? And they go, Ooh, yes. You know, my flowers move. The trees move, the grass talks, everything's alive, but people would never see it because you got to get out of your own mind. It's very interesting about what you said about Miami, because I personally have felt resistance to a lot of things mm -hmm. like that. And I always feel, you know how I say, you know who you're talking to? Mm-hmm. Well, that's people just willingly walk into those scenarios. You would agree? Uh, well, and most of the time, especially if they're sensitives, they got the hair in the back of their head, you know, their neck on their, but they're terrified. Well, when you're terrified, what you do is that encases everything right there to make you, because it's, I don't think the nature of God wants to scare us. It just inculps and you know comes back around us so we will learn something there. But most people run. I mean, I've been with people many times and they'll go, I don't know what's going on. I said, I want to know. <laughs> I want to know what's going on because I'm not afraid. I mean, orbs will come up into my hands because I've got that. Uh, there's a book about me, but it's also got pictures of me holding orbs because I went into a haunted, a haunted house in Kentucky. There's a lot of stuff like this going on in Kentucky. And that's why they call me because I'm not afraid at all. If you're afraid, they love to eat up on you. If they, 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 they that's right. Mm -hmm. I actually, there was a time when I first got married 
and um, I got very ill. Like I had to go out on disability mm -hmm. and um, I was the only soul on the first floor of this house, right? Uh -huh. And they would feed off of me and I literally, people thought I was nuts, but I, I got weaker and weaker and weaker. Yes. Yes. Sleeping 18 hours a day more. And, and I would say, I'm dying. Oh, I was not depressed. I was dying. Yeah. They were eating and you up. They were. And I would say oh, that uh, I'm like, they're, they're vampires, like mm -hmm. energy yes. vampires. Yes. And but they were the sucking me. Yeah, but Pardon look me? what the movie look at what the movies have done to it clarified like it's no, it's not like that. Just like when I saw that guy going that one that's a vampire, but it wasn't one grabbing in you in the neck. He's taking your uh natural you know, your supernatural abilities. I literally felt like I was dying. Oh yes. Absolutely. I couldn't Absolutely. keep food down. Like I, I was vomiting if I did try to eat anything. Um, my health declined rapidly. And I, after like months of this, I, I'm, I'm like, I'm going to die. And I flew to Florida, the sunshine state yes. from New York. And um, that's where I recovered. And I yes. never lived back in that house again. That's the house I came home from the hospital in as a baby. And never I never went back. Yeah. And I bet you whatever is on that house, that wasn't in the house. I bet that was on the land. It was the land because. Yeah, because the land carries a lot. When they put buildings, look in New York. I mean, Jeremy and I talked about this. Those, they, some of those buildings in New York were spell bound. They have got spells on them and they know it. And it's just like when the, you know, uh, the Twin Towers, now they've changed it. You can feel the difference. They knew exactly because they also they did the Babel uh, arch. Oh, they know exactly what they're doing. Those are portals. And I want to go to Philadelphia. Uh, anybody out there that goes to Philadelphia, I'd like to be invited to Philadelphia because that is something absolutely. The Philadelphia Museum is sitting on an Indian mound and they talk about things moving in that museum. Well, that's the house that I grew up on. I believe that they um, should not have built the house on that land. Or they did not cleanse the energy off of it. Oh, they did not. I used to watch the um, Native American village in my backyard every night when I was a little girl. Oh, my gosh. So they were, <laughs> that's Native. Oh, my gosh. They probably had a burial site. I think they did. And I think that's why it was like just yucky energy in the house that I well, so my friends were terrified to go into my house yeah because well and I have friends that have houses like that too and they and I had to go in and cleanse them in fact I'm going to a house to cleanse uh this Saturday and I mean I do a lot of different things because I do it all the way I'll start working on their land before I ever get to their house then when I get there uh, I'll start asking questions they say how do you know that you haven't even been here well, the house will talk to me because my house, you know, my house talks. When we sit, sit in things, it'll pop. And it'll th and then I said, that's true. You know, Jeremy listens to it too. Because once you start doing this, your house, anything that you go into starts changing everything. Why all the popping? I Everywhere I go, my it's like a little lid. Atomic, it's atomic bomb that goes off because when you hit that, when there is a, a vibration that is not matching this vibration and it comes and overrides it, it causes a, poof, it causes energy. It's called air press, pressing, uh, air press, uh, no, air pressure. Because I can go like this and my body and my house will pop because I've taken in the, the vibration of the house and the house will pop, 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 pop. Because it's air pressure. You're changing the air pressure just by the vibration. See, most people don't even understand that. Thank God. Thank God. Because we'll hear it, not usually in a thing like that, because I'm wondering if it's also maybe visitors arriving. You know, well, it could be because a veil has been opened and they walk in. Now, the, my mother, when she came in, I now my house just popped. And I said, my mother. So my mother, remember my mother died here. So when I said it, it went pop. 
and I knew it was back here. So I, you know, and I watch everything in my house because if it goes down into the pipes of the water pipes, I know it's deeper. If it goes into a corner, I go find the corner. You know, it tells you exactly what it is. And people, you know, a lot of people when they come in here and stay with me for a weekend, they have a my mother will kind of fix them. And I don't tell you most people because it scares them. But they'll say there was somebody like tucking me in. I said, well, that's my mother. Because she really likes people. She loves children. My father has been at the kitchen before when I had a psychic that was well, she was a medium. And she said, I don't know who that guy is, but he keeps running back and forth. I said, that's my father. Because you got to understand, I've been here since I've been eight years old. This house, but the day that the house spoke to me, when I had this house remodeled and everything, I always said my mother and my father. And one day my house came to me and said, this is not your mother and father's house. This is your house, my house, your house. And I went, I got it. So I never said it again because it is my house. It's not my mother's and father's because it doesn't even match anymore. We right. completely redid it. So that's what I've said. There are things here that people, but people don't, if they don't understand it, they'll be scared about it. I have no fear about it at all. I don't do ghost hunting anymore. I do battlefields. Another one I would like to go is a lot of these civil war battlefields because you can see them. Mm -hmm. and they need to, they're still stuck to the earth because they're angry about what happened. They didn't fulfill what they felt was given them. Like the Civil War, I mean, we have a lot of Civil War stuff here. And I'll take people and take them into the battlefields and you'll see the blood. And when you start raising up the frequency, you'll see them go out, go back home. So they're angry about like. Well, they realize they realize they made a very big mistake. They followed a man or an idea and they didn't follow their souls. So they gave up their soul for war. I don't think people understand what war really does to us. It kills our souls. You don't, you're not here to kill each other. You're here to love and honor the spirit of what's going on, not to fight over what? Exactly. An ideology? Well, and anyway, the Civil War was never about slavery. It was about money. The, the South was much more, uh, you know, abundant because of the, co the cotton fields. And but they were doing industrial in the North. You can feel I mean, I've already been told all. Of, and I thought they were mad because they thought they were doing, you know, they were doing the cotton gin and all of that. And they were doing inventions because people were getting these profound experiences. Tesla. Tesla understood electricity. You can put a stick, put some copper wire, put an antenna, put it down in your uh, on your uh, ground and you will create an antenna of light or electrical currents. It works. And that's what they're taking out of this planet they're taking away that electrical charge. They know exactly. Believe me, these people have been here a long, long time. We've been being recycled here to never leave. Only reason why I know that is because I went out and I remember the fence. And it is not a global world. It is a flat earth. And it is a firmament. Go back into the Bible. I sat and watched it all. And I so, realized. I was curious about that. When you did exit, I wanted to know what you saw when you had your near-death experience. Like, if you could well, describe first I that. right next to the ambulance because I kept thinking, why have they turned off the light? Well, I, the girl that was with me, the nun that was with me, I asked her, so why did you all turn off the lights? She said, we never turned off the lights. It's when you left the room. And I left my body and I rode by the ambulance for a long time. I kept saying, I can't not be do this. I can't be riding next. How can I be? And I put my head in and I'd see myself. And you know, what I, that is on that is also on ghost. Remember with that guy on the train and they would look and I thought, oh, my God, I did that. That's exact. It would be. And I remember I went up by the a driver and I looked right at him and I said, am I going to the hospital? And he turned around and he said, yeah, you are. But his spirit was talking to him, me, not his physicality. 
just like when I when they put me in the ambulance, I heard the guy say she's not going to make it. And I got li livid because I even asked the nun. I said, or, you know, I told her, I said, Marcia, why did that guy say that I wasn't going to make it? She said, the guy never said anything. Well, he didn't. I heard everything from uh, his mind. I, I mean, when I got out of the when I got out of the operation uh, from the heart attack, <laughs> I remember the doctor, the surgeon had Kohan shoes. I wore Kohan shoes. Kohan shoes, the most expensive shoe you can wear, three hundred and fifty dollars. And I used to wear them. And I remember I could see his Kohan shoes. And I asked the nurse, I said, did he put one of those uh things over his shoes so he wouldn't gotten any uh, dirt, I mean, blood or anything. She said, first of all, how do you know he had Kohan shoes? You were laying flat on a, a, a gurney. I said, because I saw it. I said, he also, he leaned over and he lost his pen and it rolled down. She said, how did you know that? I said, first of all, folks, you need to really put a sign up on the, uh, you know, the emergency room wall, you know, ceiling and say, if there, you should be able to read that. If you're out of body, you should be able to read it. it. Says get back into your body. I told him. I said you need to say that. Get back in your body. And they said they started laughing, and I said that's true. We don't have any instructions. I so said, you were just kind of roaming around. Oh yeah, I went everywhere around the hospital because you can just think it, and you're there. Because I remember when I saw myself standing in the corner. But I was also in my body watching my, everything going on in my solar plexus. And I kept thinking, this doesn't make sense because I could turn around and there I was over here. But I was right here watching them doing it down here, not up here. And wow. I kept thinking, how's that work? How's that? You know, you're trying to figure it out. And it took me six to seven months to figure it out. And then I had a lot of out-of-body experiences. Now, That's was it very crazy. different to do by what you say choice, right? Yeah. Um, of, you know, not when you choose to exit and then when you have a near-death experience, all those two experiences different? They are different, but they're also very connected. Because sometimes you don't know you're dead. Well, that's why you have to ask the when I'm working with somebody and I see him standing on the road and you see somebody just standing there and I said, and I just go by. I don't see him physically. I mean, I can feel them. I do see them, but I'll go, do you know you're dead? And they go, ah! then they're gone. A lot of times I don't even know they're dead because, well, look at the sixth sense. Oh my God. That was the best movie. Because, I, I, I mean, I remember looking at my husband at the time. I said, I see, I, I hear them. I do hear them. I hear them all the time. And I used to scare me to death because you'd hear a boy, hey. Or I would lay in my bed and go, Jenny. And I, it, it scared me. Then and when I when I got awake and I came back to the house, I was laying down and went, Jenny. And I raised up and I said, yeah, this is Jenny. So what do you got to say? And it's gone. Were they trying to scare you? Yes. Oh, because I used to, did you ever watch Charlie Brown like Peanuts? Yes. Do you remember the teacher? No, I didn't. I'll describe. It. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Charlie Brown or somebody would be talking. Yes, ma'am. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm. Yes, ma'am. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. You never understood what she was saying and yeah. you would talk to her. So, I would hear murmuring, I call it murmuring. Yeah. And it gets you, like I could tell you're annoyed. I would get annoyed and I'm like, you either speak up where I can understand you or shut up. Oh, see, like, that's a, yeah. Well, I used to get in, they would come into my bedroom and I put a, a, a and this is where people, if they're doing channeling, especially if they're working with, I'd say, you don't ever come into my bedroom. You don't scare me in my bedroom because that that's not allowed unless there is an emergency and i have the first one that ever came to me his name was joe and this is the very beginnings we were going to uh, i had a woman who i taught her son and she'd had an experience and so we were doing a prayer you know we were going to go in uh, in frankfurt which is about 15 20 minutes away and i'm sitting there and all of a sudden this man starts talking to me and he said 
I said, who? Now, nobody else is hearing him. Nobody. He just said, my wife is coming and I want you to ask her what is around her neck. And I thought, who is this? He said, my name is Joe and I need to talk to my wife. And I thought, whoa, wait a minute. You know, so sure enough, this woman came in. She stood right there. And I said, what is that around? It was his ring, his wedding ring. And then I looked at her and I said, Joe is here. Boom. Everybody in this room just went, whoa. And he started talking to her. And nobody. Now, these are Christian women that are in prayer. I'm feeling like, oh, my God, what is <laughs> he is He is talking. He stayed with me for almost a year. Because he caught, you know, he would be the one that would wake me up in the middle of the night. And I said, Joe, that's unacceptable. You cannot ever do that because it scares me. It upsets me. I don't, I need this. And one day he did, after he got the message, about two or three weeks or something like that. I, well, it's probably longer than that. He get, he taps me in the back in, uh, in my bedroom. And he said, help me, help me. My wife is getting ready to commit suicide. I picked up the phone and sure enough, that's what she was doing. You know I just why? Chills. Yeah, because she had not seen his shoes. His uh, slippers were under her bed. And when she found it, it took her out because she loved this man. And he was furious with her. He told me, you, and I had to tell her, I said, you're not going to do this because Joe does not want you to do this. And she said, how do you know? I said, I know about the slippers. And she said, how do you know about the slippers? I said, because Joe is telling me about the slippers. And she never had another experience like that again. She met with Joe. They had a conversation and he said, I had to leave. He told her exactly. I had to leave you because you were too weak with me here. You need to be strong for the family. And I thought, she said, it made perfectly good sense. There's always a reason, right? We may not understand. There's always a message. There's always a message. Uh, yeah, because I've had them where they've given me phone numbers. And I'm not a medium like you. I'm not, you know, I don't, this is not I do normally. And then yeah, they would give me, I mean, I had a, a also I had a client who brought her uh, father-in-law here. He was dead. But he took all of the balls off of the Christmas tree and ran them across the room. And she said, do you need to see Jenny? And Yeah. She packed him up in the car, left him here for three days. And we sat down and had a conversation. And I said, do you realize you're dead? You need to go because you're scaring everybody at the household. He said, that's not what I wanted to do. I just wanted to let them know I loved them. And that's why I love the balls off of the tree. Because he knew that there was, and these uh, ornaments were his ornaments. They weren't hers or anybody because they, they all had names like I did for a long time. Yeah. I mean, I can tell you stories upon stories like that because I don't. And so he stayed with me and then I called her and I said, he's gone home. She said, I know because everything's calm at my house now. It's calm. That's what I'm saying. The veil is right next to us. Now, how you invite that in will be how you're going to receive it. And I, well, that's why they say, you know, don't follow the, follow the yellow brick road, look behind the curtain because the veil is there. Now I've seen them open up the veil. That's how my mother did, but I didn't see her. I felt her, but she opened the veil and came up behind me. And I knew why she did it because she said, I would have scared you if you came, if I came into you. So she put her arms around me and I knew that was my mother. And all she did was whisper and say, can I, for, can you forgive me? And I said, you were forgiven the minute you ask. It was a connection that my mother has never had alive together. And it happened after she died. That's really interesting. I'm going to have to wrap this up, but I do think that's incredibly important. What you just said, tell me if you agree with this. So you just said what it feels like to me is your mother worked on her relationship with you after she crossed. Yeah. My dad spent years working with me mm -hmm. to help heal our relationship. I have a closer, like, yes, I may still like have to work through some things 
from childhood. Yes. But the relationship, even before he crossed, we had a much healthier relationship in my 30s. But even it's a just a healthier relationship. Oh, my gosh. Yes. And he put so much effort into our relationship. And some people refuse to work with their deceased loved ones. And because I think that is the Bible, you can't. You can't entertain, entertain dead people. Yeah, but some people do it out of anger. They will now, not now forgive. They do, you can see them throw things. I mean, my father and mother both came to me and thanked me for changing the uh, generations. But because we're healing our generations, we're absolutely, our, and we are the ones that are doing it. You're going to be doing it in the past, but you're going to be also doing it in the future because every child that's going to go through that that stream of light, we have changed it for every one of our, our relatives and people just by being in a different stream of energy of light. It's the most amazing thing I've ever done in my life, and you've heard me say that. Absolutely. And my mom and dad thanked me, thanked me on the Drake side and the lay side and thanked me. You're always a fascinating conversation. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time. Like every time we talk, I think, wow, we could just like an aspect of something that you say. I think yeah. we could go in that direction and just do like another hour on that. There's just well, I think always people ready more. To hear this, Daniela. That's there. It's time. They need to start. Really, that's why you're teaching. That's why I teach. We want them to. There's so much more vast that's going on here, and this is not where I'm choosing to be. I want to be the light. I want to be the highest good of myself. And I agree. That's all we could hope for, right? The yeah, highest really good that want. we can be. Yeah. And if we come together in that thought, think about what we're changing right there. Just when two or more gather, the Bible is right there. Two or more gather. What we're talking about is church. This is more church because they took all of this out of the Bible. And they know they did. There's so much more here and they didn't want us to know that. That's why they wanted us to be small. Small minded, small, they've indoctrined us, they've been vaccinated us, they've done everything like cattle. I'm not a cattle. I, I'm very glad that these animals are here, but there's so much more with us. And that's the way I feel. I, I can't wait for the next time. Every, every time we connect, I think, ah, oh, again, if, if you have time, I, it's just I mean, all warm. you can do is let me know because I'm retired more than anything. <laughs> I mean, now yesterday, this is funny. I was with my nephew and he ha had to get a vasectomy. Now, this is funny because I'm sitting here and they said, you know, this this doctor and this nurse said, you know, we've seen a lot of people come in here for a man getting a vasectomy, but we never thought he would bring his, his aunt. <laughs> yeah. I would say that's different. That's well, different. Yes, and he loved it because he's very much like me. He's a sensitive that's just learning not to be afraid. And he said, I'm so glad that you came with me because he said, you make me get soft, but you make me feel safe. And that's, well, a that's thing. a key. That's raising the vibration again. Yeah. Raise it. Well, and that's why a lot of people get upset with this because they're not feeling safe. We're giving a safe place, but they don't feel safe within and I mean, I just want us to open up. I mean, you're doing it and I really appreciate the work you do because that brings people up to a higher consciousness that it's real. And That's I've been doing it for a long time. Yeah, it is cool. And you're in Ireland, but it doesn't matter when we're talking, we're together right here, right now. I take it a step further. I don't know when this happened before I got here, but if I, I think of you, I I feel that connection. It's yeah. not like, oh, I miss so-and-so. Like, my heart feels you. Yes. 
Yes, and I know did. you've said the same thing to me. I'm yes. feeling you, girl. Are you yeah. okay? <laughs> and this is what really uh, my niece said, you know, I don't know how you know this, but how do you know to call me when you, and I have clients that said, how did you know that? Because you feel it. And it's not hard. The simplicity of this is so easy because you'll feel it when they take away from you, you go, you'll feel them go away. And I thought, mm, there's something going on. Or you'll feel them, on, they'll just feel, they'll be filled up in the room. So I just, all I do is I check out the energy that's being said. I said, what's going on? How'd you know? Because they release back. And I, that's what I'm teaching a lot of these kids, learning just how to do when it's in or out. What are you really feeling? I mean, when everybody in the room, and you've been in there, when you go into a room and everybody's real tight inside of here so you're going oh so what you do is you start raising up the frequency and everybody start it's almost like giving everybody a drink of you know wine or something then you ever kind of say yeah yeah okay yeah i'm feeling better you know because it feels you can make them or break them you can make them or break them I love but it. our job is not to break them it's oh, to yeah. make them aware but there's a lot of people that know this power and they misuse it abuse yes it is it's a worse abuse than anybody can imagine so yeah, <clears> i always feel like happy in my life girl thank you i appreciate having you in mind it, it's i may only have a handful of people in my life but i feel very blessed mm -hmm. because you can choose the path that you're taking the direction of your life the people in your life it's all a choice it is now just before we go you did i did i answer what the questions you were asking for me like i think in a very natural flow i feel it is i i, I personally think this was a fascinating time together mm -hmm. i hope other people agree because i i do if i've had these conversations with you going more in depth and i'm still riveted that says something. Mm -hmm. So I think others will enjoy it as well. But it, you beautifully, I felt it was so organic. That's why I want it to be. I don't want it to look like, that's why I've never, ever had, you know, when they'll ask me, I remember the first time I really was giving a presentation, they put a, you know, a thing up, they, where's your paper? Or what are you doing? I said, I'm not doing any paper. That was the funniest thing because that was when I did a really big event and i had a um, mic that was you know that you could be and i walked into the bathroom and it was on so they saw us pee a whole lot of ladies we were in there and so when i came out <laughs> and i said well now you know that i can pee you know that's hilarious it is because you don't you know it you don't even think about it i forgot i had it and i didn't un but it did matter because when i'm in like that it doesn't matter anymore I'm not, I'm not Jenny Drake. I am Jenny Drake or Virginia Drake. You know, it, it, um, I just had profound experiences and I want people to know I'm not only one behind it. It's everybody can have it. Exactly. Yes. So thank you so much for your time today. I know it's you, early. You look amazing. I'm glad I to see, see you in great health. Like you're doing fabulous. Well, you know, it'll so. be almost a year. In October, it'll be a year for my heart attack, the second one. You feel that's behind you now? Oh, <laughs> you I, feel like It's all back because that came back in from Ron, my ex-husband. I know. And the hurt, the pain, the stupidity of how I behave. But you know what? I don't regret anything. I don't because I had to get through that blockage and I had to get, and I had to get angry about it. There's sometimes anger is not a bad thing. As long as you're not sending it out to somebody else. I was Thank just you. angry. We have a right to be angry, but we don't go out and attack anybody else with it. Thank you, you know? for saying that. Yeah. That is something that I say, but it's just a Danielerism. <laughs> like yeah. I feel like sometimes anger can be a tool like oh, within myself because it, I use it to change things. I don't like this. I, I don't like whatever it is and use it to change. But my I do my best never to push that out on someone else. No. But I and do I use it I to stop being a doormat. Yeah, to I stop to feel it. Yeah. My heart. 
I talk to my heart. I mean, my heart is what talk, all your organs talk to you. I don't care what anybody, because I was a Reiki person. And I, that was my first Reiki uh, share when I was up. <laughs> and I remember looking down and this, I was looking at this guy and I, he was, I, all of a sudden his liver started talking to me and his gall bladder. And I mean, it was like, what? And I said, do you do corn? And the gallbladder was saying, I cannot do raw corn. It was telling me. And he said, oh, my God, I love fresh corn. I said, you can't eat that anymore. Because it, he said, and he said, I need to go to the doctor. I said, you need to find out about your gallbladder. And it was. His gallbladder was bad. But the gallbladder said, if you will stop eating certain foods, I will heal. And it did. Good to hear. That's why I said, people don't understand these bodies are much more massive and they do talk. My heart told me what was going on. My heart said, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to hurt you. I didn't mean to kill you. I said, well, you did. And it said, I was holding back. So it wouldn't hurt you. I said, give it to me. And I remember it was like, I pulled out something and I just went like that. And it just ran, you know, it's ribboned out everywhere. It just started flying everywhere. And I thought, oh my God, how much have I been holding in my heart? And soon as it went down, I went, Ugh, and my heart popped inside. And it was like, whoa, that's how much we hold. We're just vessels. Okay, I need to wrap this up, but give, can we just say goodbye? But I'm going to keep you for a second after sure. we end the broadcast. So thank you, everyone, yeah. for watching. Miss Ginny, if there's anything you want to share, no, I think we shared everything there is. It's real. Okay. Okay, That's so how thank works. you, everybody, for watching. Hello. If you enjoyed that fabulous interview, you're going to really want to watch another interview I have with Ginny. Um, I died nine times like a cat, and I'm still here in my private members area. Follow the link below, and we're offering a free 30-day trial. So many blessings, and I'm happy that you're watching. Please subscribe. Namaste.